zebrafish tumor models, they um, can be envisioned um, in, in several ways. Uh, tumors implanted subcutaneously in zebrafish, they will form a, a solid tumor that both invade uh, locally, but also send out metastasis into, uh, in this case, uh, the hematopoietic uh, plexus in the tail fin, um, a similar region as bone marrow in humans. For some tumor types that are used to a more soft environment, you can uh, consider implantation um, in the yolk. Um, these tumors will then not disseminate systemically in the fish to the same extent, but they might exhibit a local dissemination in the yolk. This is mainly um, a, an implantation route that's, that's considered for uh, soft tissue cancers or hematological malignancies. For hematological malign malignancies, you can also uh, consider um, injecting the tumor cells uh, intravenously uh, and then establish the, the tumor in the bloodstream of the zebrafish. It was systemic cancer, similar to what is experienced in the patients, of course. This is also a way that you can directly seed uh, metastasis in the fish by, by implanting uh, solid tumor cells, uh, IV, and then they will then grow in this metastatic niche uh, that you can see over here, the, the uh, caudal hematopoietic places. We at Biorepiria prefer the first route because it will allow you to both study the primary tumor as well as uh, the metastatic process in detail. This is an image um, of the blood vasculature of the zebrafish labeled with endogenous uh, green fluorescent protein. So this is a transgenic fish that expresses a green fluorescent protein in endothelial cells uh, implanted with tumor cells that have been labeled with a red fluorescent dye called DII. If you do this and you wait a couple of days, you can see how the tumor starts attracting uh, blood vessels from the host and establish an elaborate intratumoral vasculature that the, um, that the tumor cells are then using uh, for dissemination. As you can see here, um, the tumor will also um, recruit uh, inflammatory cells um, and the tumor cells will then uh, go on to invade the local environment in the host. This is what it can look like uh, when you study um, both local and distal uh, metastasis in the zebrafish. So again, we're using this uh, transgenic strain where you can see all the blood vessels uh, with endogenous green fluorescent protein and the tumor cells are labeled in red. Three days after tumor cells have been implanted here in the subcutaneous uh, perivitaline space, uh, you can see how they start invading the tissues locally. Moreover, uh, in addition to local invasion, they will uh, cross uh, into the bloodstream and disseminate into the caudal hematopoietic plexus, as you can see here. It's an accurate measurement of lymph node metastasis or distal organ metastasis also in patients. So it's an enormous level of detail, subcellular uh, detail that you can study the metastatic process. Of course, these tumor cells can then be uh, manipulated genetically to overexpress certain genes or uh, knock out certain genes. And you can see how those genes are influencing the metastatic process. Similarly, in the host, you can upregulate or downregulate genes expressed by the endothelial cells and see how that affects the metastatic process. But perhaps more importantly, if you use certain uh, drugs um, targeting this metastatic process, you can see how that will affect uh, this process of the tumors moving into the bloodstream or the end result, how many tumor cells have in the end managed to metastasize uh, to this uh, bone marrow-like niche in the fish. For more information, please visit our website or contact us directly to set up a meeting to discuss how the zebrafish can help you.